Hello everyone, I am Douglas E. Welch and welcome back to another episode of In the Garden for a Gardener's Notebook. For more information on a gardener's notebook, you can visit douglasewelch.com. There you'll find links to that blog as well as everything else that I do. Well, it's been a little warmer this week and it's not so good for us, but it is good for one particular thing here in the garden and that is right here to my right. You see here, this is our cherry tomato. It's going pretty much gangbusters still. It's covered with fruit and actually if you look right in the very center, if Joe can zoom in on that, you'll see there are two in there that are just about ripe. They're not quite coming away off the stem yet, so we'll give them another day or so. I can count one, two, three, four, or five, so at least another eight or nine on there already, just a quick glance. So this one's doing really, really well. Um, again, I have heard that tomatoes don't like to pollinate over 90 degrees. I'm hoping the temperature kind of stays where it's been this week, which is about 85 to 86. Uh, seems to do them well. They are getting plenty of water. The neighbor sprinkler actually hits these pots, so we uh, benefit a little bit from them not trimming their sprinklers quite well. So these tomatoes get a little more water than they would normally. This is tomato B. You may have seen the way I've laid them out in the blog post. That was tomato C cherry I don't know maybe this is tomato B again from our neighbors it's starting to kick off its growth quite well too we got some flowers happening up here at the top no fruit as of yet but these are a bigger tomato they're more of a bee sticky style tomato so they'll take longer to set fruit and get to a certain size and then actually have that fruit ripen and here is uh, tomato A tomato A is struggling it's doing better it's got nice green growth on the top it's uh, Maybe you could use a little well, stamp. It's got plenty of water. I think it's just not quite a vigorous of a, of a cutting that we got on this one. We'll keep letting him go. We'll see where he comes out. I, I'm uh, heartened a little bit from the green, new green growth on top. He wasn't looking very well at all. Again, you can check out the blog and see photos of these all laid up together and how they're progressing over time. Our second little project this afternoon, the uh, sun's just going down, so it's cooling off quite nicely, is time to put a new soaker hose in this bed right here. Uh, I have a soaker hose in this bed which has a repair in it. The repair really didn't take too well. I don't try repairing them more than about twice. You just get diminishing returns over time. I do save the fittings and stuff that I can for use in uh, replacement and repair projects down the road, but it's time for this one to get replaced. It's got a uh, at the joint where I've fixed it, it's kind of spraying water off and it's better if the water goes into the plants and not randomly spraying off into the garden. So just to show you real quickly, here's the repair I had made earlier on the soaker hose. Now some people didn't think you could actually repair soaker hoses in this way. Uh, this is the same fitting you use for a normal garden hose that you've perhaps cut or got a hole in. Uh, and in some cases that's true. This hose was smaller. They're making soaker hoses with a smaller diameter now. This is like a half inch diameter and unfortunately it's very hard to get the fittings into and I think this fitting was a bit big because it actually tore the, um, the soaker hose right here and that's where it started leaking. So in the future I'll have to either find a smaller fitting or maybe just forego repairing them like this at all. It's going to depend on what I can find at my local home store. Well, that's it for our little mini project out here in the garden today. Uh, not a lot going on. Have a lot of cleanup as we always do and a lot of maintenance and stuff like that. I am uh, taking more cuttings. I've got more lavender cuttings, more lantana cuttings on the bench that hopefully we'll take. I've got some ideas of where to put them and uh, places where they can kind of spill out over the borders of the beds and kind of green up the area and make it a little more cottagey in the back especially. So we'll see how those take on and if they do, I'll put up more cuttings. We'll have more stuff for the garden. Until next time, I hope that everything's going really well in your garden. For more information, you can always visit the website, douglasewelch.com. There you'll find links to a gardener's notebook as well as everything else that I do, including my word, technology IQ, careers in new media, and more. Until next time, keep on maintaining your garden and keep on digging.